that the funding is set up in silos. If you're in treatment, you get money here, you get prevention money here, enforcement money there, and we all know that it's a lifestyle. And really we gotta work at how do we connect these dollars together so that we can have programs that will last more than the two years, three years, whatever that funding cycle say, because the situation didn't occur in such a short amount of time. So that's what excites me about this uh, conference here. We really look forward to not only what happens here today, but where we land after the day in terms of developing relationships and going from here. So please, that, that's what I said earlier about uh, conversation. Let's keep the conversation going, get to know one another, exchange cards, all those kind of things, so that we will continue this process as we move forward. So here this afternoon, uh, it's not often that I, that I get a chance to introduce someone that I've seen like on the cover of a magazine. You know, I just kind of, you know, you get an opportunity to do that. And so here today, uh, we have two uh, outstanding presenters, partners here who are with the uh, Alvis House, which has an outstanding reputation in our community. And we have the CEO here, Denise Robinson, who will provide a uh, presentation here, and she'll get started with it. And then when joining her will be Dr. Randy Shively as they present. You're familiar with the title, The Challenge of Reentry Motivating Offenders with co concurrent Disorders. We do have one of our presenters, Beth Fisher, who will not be able to uh, be here uh, today. Beth Redberg, rather. Beth Fisher is with conservatory. Excuse me. And uh, uh, she had an emergency, emergency medical, uh, uh, emergency medical uh, issue that came up yesterday, so she will not be here. So they will, get, will be blessed to get a little more time with them. And if they don't go that long, then you will not be blessed because I can't do a song and dance show. <laughs> just, uh, go from there and it will proceed. So turn it on over to you. So let's give it a while. How's everyone? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good because she was a CEO on the Columbus Mountain CEO magazine, one of the top CEOs in Central Ohio. Oh, so, all right. <laughs> because I have a really hard time speaking really quickly. Um, I mean, I can, but I say 15 minutes. And two of us in 15 minutes, there's no way I can do that. Well, now I've got about 20. <laughs> there will be a test at the end of this lesson, so please take notes. I'm kidding. Um, I'm really excited because reentry is something that Alice House, if you don't know who Alice House is, it's something that we've done for many, many years, but um, it wasn't that buzzword of reentry. All of a sudden, in the last five or six years, you start hearing the word reentry. Um, Alice House is a multifaceted human services organization that um, treats offenders, former offenders, offenders, those going through the court system, those being released from prisons, those being released from jails those um, that are in court and pre-trial prior, prior to being convicted. And the um, reason why I say we're a multifaceted human services organization is because we provide more than halfway house services, which people traditionally think Alice House does. Also, I really like that we are still called Alice House because people think we're one facility. We have 22 programs at 17 locations in Columbus State, Chillicothe, Toledo, and Lima. And so a lot of people don't know that how large we are. Our smallest facility is 15 beds, our largest facility is 104 beds, and then we have an eight bed and then a 30 bed, and it goes on and goes down from there. But a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, and I like um, going under the radar. I like people not knowing how large we are. But um, when I started Alice House 25 years ago next month, um, <laughs> I um, started as a teacher for offenders with mental retardation. And um, what was really interesting about that is that the agency had less than, less than a million dollar budget. And today we're almost $13 million. We had about 40 employees. We have 250 employees, close to 250 employees. So things have really, really changed in, you know, since I've been there. Also, the major thing that's changed since I've been there is that we, it was like the typical three hots in a pot. Um, we gave them a place to sleep, we gave them three meals a day, and we said, you gotta get a job and go out there. Well, one of the things um, 
prior to coming to Alice House, I used to teach persons with no retardation that were not makers. I came to Alice House only to um, go to the interview because um, I looked in the newspaper, saw a job, I worked with offenders with mental retardation, and my first thing was, they're incarcerating people with mental retardation? That is crazy. I'm going to this interview and I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You know, I really felt like this is not right. Well, I went there and I'm uh, still there. <laughs> um, it was um, the most unique program. It was the first program of its kind in the nation. Today, they're still in private those organizations. Um, and we're still the only one in the country that, met, that is Medicaid funded. So it's really interesting to look at that population too because there are um, people that are truly mentally retarded, but they've committed crimes, mostly sex crimes, because I always say it's environmental, they're environmentally retarded because they really, um, it's, they're victims. I always uh, say that they're victims of their environment because um, grandma, said, here, you sleep in a bed with your cousin that's a girl, and then you've got these um, persons with mental retardation that are also um, going through puberty, and they're exploring, and so they touch cousin. And so what, what you find is then all of a sudden, family's like, oh my god, you raped her cousin. Well, you put them in that situation too. And so you have to look at the whole family. And that's why I'm really glad that we have some extra time today because that is one of the ways our organization is really moving to family programming because you cannot just program an individual offender. Mm -hmm. You have got right. to program a right. family. Right. And we're getting, um, I'm so glad that we have time to get into that a little bit because we're doing some really unique things. Um, also, I wanted to say before I go through, the, through this, um, is to tell you that not only the program with offenders with no retardation, Alice House is known for specialized programs. Um, one of the other programs that we have is a program for veterans, uh, primarily with post-traumatic stress disorder. That program is on the Veterans Administration, um, Medical Administration Building in um, Chillicothe. And it is a program, it was the greatest collaboration you ever want to know. Um, actually, offenders, uh, inmates at Chillicothe uh, Correctional Institution contacted us and asked us could we, could we help them start a um, halfway house while they were incarcerated because they were uh, not able to be released from prison because they had no place to go. Well, what we said to them was, no, you can't do it, but we can do it for you. And so we did, and, and they actually brought to our administrative office, they brought several of the inmates in shackles, and we sat down there and planned how to do a halfway house just for them. And um, not only do we have the greatest collaboration between a nonprofit organization, ours, number one, number two, um, the State Department of Reactive Corrections, they actually provided all inmate labor to gut the building and to renovate the building. They did the electrical, they did the plumbing, they did everything that had to do with the building. Then number three, um, three is we had the federal government because it was the VA medical center. They gave us the building for a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I said, that's the greatest collaboration, plus we had the inmate input as to what their needs were. Because so many times what we do is we rely on our assessments, which a lot of people don't rely on, people rely on assessments, but I think we're really forthcoming and we really are um, progressive in our organization. So we do a lot of things based on research. But what's better to hear from the person that <laughs> what their needs are? You know, you can do all the assessments you want, and Dr. Scheidman is a psychologist, he won't want to hear this, but I don't care. Um, so, but, you know, you have to rely on the assessment, but you have to rely on what people are telling you to do, right? 